Namaste. I want to talk about something very esoteric. What else is new, right? <laughs> On this channel lately, pretty much everything has been very esoteric. <laughs> but really, this is like so deep, I don't know uh, who except maybe um, a couple of the students who've had some realizations might be able to follow it. Anyway, I want to talk about Samadhi. You know, we hear a lot about Samadhi, but if you go to anywhere like a yoga school or a temple or a place where people are teaching different scriptures and stuff, and you ask them, can you teach me Samadhi? Probably the answer will be no. <laughs> or they'll really, they'll just avoid the whole subject, you know, change the subject, start talking about something else. Because people are familiar with external religious and spiritual methods. But because they don't actually practice and study consciousness, they don't understand things like Turiya and Sushupti and the different states of consciousness and how to manipulate them or how to experience them. So I guess the best approach would be to relate the kind of experiences I've been having lately. Uh, I've been doing a lot of japa of the Panchakshara Mantra, Aum Nama Shivaya. And this is a very powerful mantra. I can't really explain how powerful it is, but it changes your consciousness. And it gives access to realms of experience that are beyond anything I've encountered so far in all the different you know, experiences of spiritual life of the, that I've had. So, you know, earlier in this series, we talked about lucid dreaming and watching, uh, using a mantra to stay conscious, awake, as you go into sleep. So, this works when going from Jagrat consciousness to Svapna, dreams. But it also works when you can go from Jagrat consciousness directly into Sushupti, dreamless sleep. And this is the gateway to Samadhi. I don't know why this isn't written anywhere. I don't know why it's such a great secret. The only possible explanation I come up with is that actually nobody knows this. <laughs> or it was deliberately kept secret. Anyway, while chanting the mantra, if you chant intensively, I mean for hours, especially early in the morning, it often happens to me, like right after breakfast, when I'm chanting, I'll get sleepy. I, I guess that's the way to describe it. It's not really sleepy like ordinary sleep. It's a different kind of sleep because you can sit up in yoga posture. I lean back against a cushion, you know, that I cheat a little bit. <laughs> But you can sit up in yoga posture and, like, let the mind go to sleep. Deliberately, allow the mind to go to sleep. And stay awake, stay focused on the mantra. The mantra occupies the mind. That way the mind doesn't start dreaming which is not what you want. You, you don't want the mind making up stories. You want the mind to just shut up and be quiet. <laughs> so give it something to occupy it, like a mantra. 
And the Panchakshara mantra is ideal because it's short. It's easy to chant. Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. And if you chant for several hours, you know, beginning before sunrise, up to breakfast, and then continue afterwards, then what happens is it becomes automatic. It repeats like on replay, automatic replay. <laughs> so that's great. It occupies the mind, keeps the mind out of the way, and stops it from distracting you with all kinds of nonsense stories. So you can remain awake and go through the dream stage of sleep and up to the deep sleep, sushupti consciousness. Now, this is the gateway to Turiya. When the mind becomes completely quiescent and consciousness is no more because uh, you have withdrawn the mind from the sense objects, dharana, and the mind is also concentrated because of all the chanting. That's dhyana. And so from dhyana, you can easily move into samadhi. Now, I'm going to try to describe something that really can't be described by language. But I'm going to try anyway, <laughs> even though it doesn't make any sense from a logical point of view. And this is the state of samadhi. In the state of samadhi, well, first of all, you'll start seeing a glow. It begins as little points of light or maybe kind of sparkly phenomenon. And it grows and becomes more intense until it's like the moon. And then it can even become more intense and it's like the sun. And it can be like a round form, or it can take up the whole visual field. It can be rather suffuse, or it can be concentrated. It's, it's always different. So what this is, this is actually Brahman. This is actually the self, the primal awareness at the root of all experience. So when you are in touch with Brahman, you will notice an ineffable sense of bliss. But in this state, this is very strange, there is awareness, there is an awareness, but there's nobody to be aware. And there's no means of awareness like senses or mind. It's very strange, and it's, it sounds weird in, when I try to express it in language. There's an experience, but there's no experiencer. And there's no means or medium of experience like body or senses or mind. It just is. <laughs> it is what it is. And it knows itself. There is knowledge but no knower and no knowing. This is really weird, right? But this is the meaning of Advaita, non-dual existence. Advaita, non-dual, means there's no difference between the experience and the experiencer. So there is no experiencing happening. <laughs> This is so weird. I'm sorry, but language just, our language is made for uh, the expression of objects. And in this state, there are no objects. There is only the subject, the subjective, the self. And the self is aware of itself. Like Ramana Maharshi, when people used to ask him about these things, he would say, well, are you conscious? People would say, yeah. So how do you know you're conscious? Doesn't that mean you're conscious 
of consciousness and of being conscious? Yeah. So he says that's Turiya. Consciousness of consciousness. Awareness of awareness. Being of beingness. This is Brahman. This is the root of everything. It has no action. It has no object. It has no desires, no mental functions. There's no meaning because there's no symbols. There's no language. It's just pure existence. Sat, chit, ananda. Existence, knowledge or consciousness, really awareness. Consciousness has an object, and here there's no objects. <coughs> and bliss, sananda. Sat, chit, ananda. So, this Brahman is the self. Not only our self or my self, it, it is the self. It is in everything. See, this was the experience I first had in 1984 when I got Shaktipat from Shakti herself. That everything is conscious and consciousness. There's no difference. That consciousness is all pervasive. And that existence is all pervading. And while at the same time it becomes the world, it is not the world. <laughs> it's in the world, but not of the world. You see, the only way you can understand this is to experience it yourself. <laughs> It's described in Shiva Purana, that from which words and the mind fall away. It's a very nice description. They cannot approach the reality of Brahman. They cannot approach the self. But anyway, when you're in this state, it's just wonderful and you never want it to end. <laughs> It's fantastic. Why? Because there's no suffering. All duality, including enjoyment and suffering, is seen as illusion. And only Brahman is truth. Only pure awareness is reality. Only unconditioned being is existence. This is the state of moksha. And this is attainable by everyone because everyone has all of the equipment. <laughs> you know, if you can see this video, you have everything you need to attain moksha. Simply you have to do the practice that removes the conditioning of duality. And of course the first step to that is understanding the theory behind it. That's why we do these videos. And I think the mantra Om Namah Shivaya has some special qualities that make it very, very appropriate for this practice. So it's highly recommended for you to learn and practice this mantra. It's simple. It's easy. Anyone can learn it in one minute, Aum Nama Shivaya. <laughs> and like I said, it's self-initiating. So you chant this mantra, use the beads. Somehow it helps to have tactile sensation, to pass the beads over the fingers one at a time, Aum Nama Shivaya, Aum Nama Shivaya, Aum Nama Shivaya. And to uh, hear in your inner ear. Don't chant it out loud. Chant it in your mind. And this will lead you slowly, slowly, or quickly, quickly, depending on your ability, to this ultimate realization, this ultimate release, this ultimate state of consciousness, moksha, or complete enlightenment. 
Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.